Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. Alrighty now folks, it's your friendly neighborhood critic back at it again and boy oh boy do we have a doozy of a story to dive into today. Grab your tea, coffee, or whatever beverage floats your boat, because we're about to unpack the latest twist in the saga of Prince Harry's American adventure. And let me tell you, this one's juicier than a ripe peach. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now, Prince Harry, the guy who used to be the spare heir, now finds himself in the middle of a legal tug of war over his US visa application. I mean, talk about a royal pain in the, well, you know where I'm going with this. Now, for those of you who've been living under a rock and, hey, no judgment, sometimes I wish I could join you there, let me catch you up. Our ginger prince decided to spill the tea in his memoir spare, and by tea, I mean he admitted to partaking in some recreational drugs back in the day. We're talking cocaine, marijuana, magic mushrooms, the whole shebang. Now, I don't know about you, but where I come from, that's not exactly the kind of thing you brag about on your visa application. You know what I mean? So naturally, this little confession stirred up quite the hornet's nest. The Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank in D.C., because of course it's D.C., where else, decided to stick their noses into Harry's business. They filled a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit demanding to see Harry's visa documents. Their argument? It's of immense public interest. Now, I don't know about you, but I can think of a few more pressing matters of public interest, like, I don't know, the climate crisis or the cost of living, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a humble critic. Now, here's where things get interesting. A judge, Carl Nichols, and no, that's not a character from a John Grissom novel, ruled that Harry's visa application should remain private. His reasoning, and I quote, the public does not have a strong interest in disclosure of the Duke's immigration records. Well, slap my face and call me Sally. Who would have thought that maybe people have better things to do than pour over a prince's paperwork? But wait, there's more. The Heritage Foundation isn't taking this lying down. Oh no, they're calling the ruling suspicious. Mike Howell, the executive director of their oversight project, which sounds something out of a spy movie if you ask me, is all fired up. He's talking about appealing the ruling and even dropped the D-bomb, deportation. That's right, folks. According to Howell, President Trump, remember him, has suggested that Prince Harry might be packing his bags next year. Now, let's take a step back for a second and really think about this. We've got a prince who left his royal life behind, moved across the pond for love, or privacy, or freedom, or whatever the reason of the week is, and now finds himself in the middle of a political and legal circus. It's like a Shakespeare play, but with more Twitter drama and less iambic pentameter. And can we talk about the irony for a hot second? Harry and Meghan left the UK partially because they wanted more privacy, right? And now we've got people clamoring to read his visa application like it's the next Game of Thrones book. Talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. But here's what really gets my goat. This whole debacle is being painted as some sort of crusade for fairness in the immigration system. Howell's going on about how Americans deserve an immigration system with both secure borders and also fairly applied rules for high-profile immigrants like Harry. Now, I'm all for fairness, don't get me wrong, but let's be real here. This isn't about fairness, this is about politics, plain and simple. And let's not forget the Netflix of it all. Howell couldn't resist taking a little dig, suggesting that maybe Harry and Meghan will spill the beans about what's under those redactions in their next Netflix special. I mean, come on. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix is already working on a Stranger Things spinoff called Stranger Royals. But jokes aside, here's a serious side to the hullabaloo. Judge Nichols made a pretty compelling argument for privacy. He pointed out that Harry, like any other foreign national, has a legitimate privacy interest in his immigration status. And you know what? I think he's got a point. Just because someone's famous doesn't mean we get to rifle through their personal documents like we're looking for the last cookie in the jar. The judge also made another good point. Harry's public statements about his past drug use don't mean he's waived all right to privacy when it comes to his immigration status. It's like saying that because I once tweeted about how much I love pizza, the world now has every right to know every time I order a pepperoni supreme. It just doesn't add up. But here's the kicker, folks. The judge said that even if Harry's records were made public, it wouldn't really tell us much about the Department of Homeland Security's general policy on admitting aliens. In other words, all this fuss is essentially over nothing. It's tearing apart your whole house looking for your keys, only to find them in your pocket the whole time. Now I know some of you out there are probably thinking, but what if Harry did get special treatment? Don't we have a right to know? 
And you know what? That's a fair question. Transparency in government is important, no doubt about it. But there's a difference between transparency and turning someone's personal life into a public spectacle. And let's be real for a second. Even if Harry did get some special treatment, are we really surprised? The guy's a prince for crying out loud. I'm not saying it's right, but let's not pretend we live in a world where everyone's treated exactly the same. If that were the case, I wouldn't have to wait in line at the DMV while Karen from Book Club gets to skip ahead because she knows the manager. But here's what really grinds my gears about this whole situation. While we're all caught up in this royal soap opera, there are real people out there struggling with the immigration system. People who don't have the luxury of high-powered lawyers or think tanks fighting their battles. People who are just trying to build a better life for themselves and their families. But are we talking about them? Nope. We're too busy worrying about whether a prince ticked to the right box on his visa application. So where do we go from here? Well, if the Heritage Foundation has its way, this drama is far from over. They're talking about appeals, about taking it further. And you know what? Part of me kind of hopes they do. Not because I want to see Harry's private information splashed all over the internet, but because maybe all this attention might actually lead to some real conversation about immigration reform. But let's be honest. That's probably wishful thinking. More likely, we're in for another round of royal drama. More headlines, more Twitter storms. It's like we're all stuck in some bizarre reality TV show, keeping up with the Windsors, if you will. So there you have it, folks. The latest chapter in the saga of Prince Harry's American Dream. Will he stay? Will he go? Will we ever know what's really in those visa documents? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure. This story's got more twists and turns than a pretzel factory, and I'll be here to break it all down for you. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.